Hello, and welcome to Barrelman TV. My name is Steve Fleck, and I'm the official announcer of the Barrelman Triathlon and the Multisport Canada Triathlon Series. It's race week for the 2023 Barrelman Triathlon, and my guest today is the founder of the Multisport Canada Triathlon Series and the co-founder of the Barrelman Triathlon with Jason Verma, John Salt. John, how are you? I'm well, Steve. How are you? You've been traipsing all over the world these days with your announcing. John, it's nice to come home. I have been on a bit of a world journey uh, the last six or seven weeks, uh, but it is nice to be home uh, with my very first uh, professional client. It's always a privilege and an honor to work for you, Jason, and the team at Multisport Canada. I'm really looking forward to being on the microphone in Welland and Niagara Falls this weekend for the Barrel Man Triathlon. John, give us the brief history of the barrel man triathlon i know this was a pet uh project of yours that you took up a number of years ago for those who might not have raced before i know we got a lot of newcomers this year give us the brief history and overview i'll do that steve yeah i'll try to be as brief as possible because i'm sure many have heard me tell this story before so i'll, I'll, I'll try to keep it short so we had a a half iron distance in welland uh in 2013 um it was it was a well received race. It went extremely well, but I had always had a uh, a hankering to have a destination event, something that was was special for athletes. And we were actually talking. Jason and I were talking with the mayor of Welland after that particular race, and I mentioned that to him, and he said, "Well, why don't you go to Niagara Falls?" Of course, light bulb went on and realized, "Well, we're we're a little dumb here. I mean, Niagara Falls is twenty minutes down the road. That that makes sense." It's going to have to be point to point, but uh, knowing Jason and 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 uh, him being a, a logistics guru, um, we drove down to Niagara Falls. We looked at uh, uh, Kingsbridge Park, and uh, we knew we had a, a winning location. And the following year, 20, uh, 2014, was the inaugural Barrelman event. This would have been uh, our ninth year, uh, but of course, with COVID, uh, we we dropped two of those years. So. We're going into year number seven officially um, and nine in our hearts. I understand there's something special at, uh, at this year's event, John. It's uh, an official long distance world championships aqua bike qualifier. What does that uh, mean exactly? So we, we approach uh, Triathlon Canada and, and bid for qualifying events um, for, for certain of our races. Uh, and this year we wanted to uh, have the aqua bike uh, be a world qualifier for that race and that will be in australia june 15th to the 25th the race won't go for 10 days but it, it'll be in that that time slot in 2024 so uh, athletes will and I, uh, athletes will be call, racing to qualify for that the barrel man uh, in addition to the age group awards will have a ten thousand dollar prize purse that's a lot of money for a triathlon you know anywhere in in canada Something special, though, is it's not just professionals, John, that are eligible for that money. Anyone who finishes in the money uh, can access the money, I understand. Yeah, again, you know, Multisport Canada, we've, we've always tried to do something a little different, and hopefully it's special for some. Uh, with this being the distance of, of, of the race that it is, we thought it only appropriate that uh, we put some prize money up. In past years, we've, uh, we've had different variations on how that money was going to be awarded. Um, and through experience, we realize that what we have to do is, is definitely separate the group that's competing for that money. In the past, um, uh, anybody could go in there and it was, in, we call it a lead age group. And uh, people were eligible for that as well as the age group awards that they were in their respective age groups. We realized that probably wasn't very fair. So we've changed it this year so that anybody, age group, Pro can enter into that first wave, into that division. They do need to give us um, some historical data that confirms that they'll be able to race at the time that's necessary uh, to be allowed in that first wave. And uh, they'll be the first ones to go off at, at 8.59. And then the age groups will, will go off one minute later, starting one minute later. And again, as far as awards go overall, uh, awards for age group will be in five-year increments uh right across the board men and women in the swim bike and the bike run the awards are going to be for 39 and under 40 to 59 and 60 plus for both male and female and then the uh, top three relay teams so 
I think this year we've got it nailed down and we're going to make sure that everybody gets awarded appropriately. Speaking of awards, I know, uh, John, over the course of time uh, at Multisport Canada, celebrating athletes' accomplishments is something that's really important uh, to you and the team at Multisport Canada. What will this mean at uh, this year's Barrelman race in particular? Well, yeah, it, and it's, it's sort of piggybacked off of what I was just mentioning about the the uh, the awards for age groups and that special first category. Let's call it the elite category. Um, we've always wanted to make sure that everybody was given an opportunity to to uh, be awarded in front of everybody that was racing that day. Now, the, the situation at Barrowman, of course, is that it's a long day, and uh, the reality is for some of the older age groups. It's an even longer day. Uh, so we used to separate the age group, age group awards into, into two different time slots. This year, we're, we're not going to do that. Um, we are going to have all of the age group awards go off at the same time. And I'm appealing to all of those athletes who can stay uh, just a little bit longer. And that, that could perhaps mean for a couple of people or a few people, maybe an hour or more, uh, and celebrate the accomplishment of, of these uh, older athletes as well so that everybody gets to be included and feel like, uh, you know, their special moment is being acknowledged. Clubs and teams have always been an important part uh, of uh, the Barrelman experience. I know the Buffalo Triathlon Club, a number of the larger clubs uh, in Ontario uh, also were in attendance. Uh, John, in the past, uh, what are you doing again this year to make it special for uh, the various teams and clubs? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we love that the Buffalo Triathlon Club is going to be there, but I, I'd be remiss in not mentioning the Rochester Tri Club. They uh, and Mike Smith, we've um, they've done a great job in, in working with us to get their athletes involved. And, and we appreciate that. That's one of the reasons that we try to have something a little special on race day. So uh, there's a boulevard that's across from the Finnish gantry, and we are inviting any club to uh, set up their their tents set up a, an area for each of their clubs so that they can cheer their athletes on as they go through that that first loop and are heading into the second. And then of course, cheer them on at the finish line. So that'll be available uh, again this year. I'd ask that um, if you haven't already arranged it with uh, Carolyn Simons, our communications director, then I would ask you to seek her out or myself uh, at Race Kit Pickup on Saturday. And we'll make sure that you get the right directions. A regular feature at uh, the Barrelman Triathlon in the past has been live music uh, in Kingsbridge Park. Uh, who do we have lined up uh, this year for some uh, live music, John? Well, you know, we 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 have Coast to Coast back. Uh, they've become almost the uh, Barrelman house band. Uh, <laughs> the first couple of years, uh, Sambuca Bob or uh, uh, Bob Hatcher, as, as we know him, who used to be uh, one of the photographers for the series as a matter of fact that's where we got to know bob and he does have this band sambuca bob and is a drummer um so their band played for the first few years and then we're unavailable but he he suggested coast to coast and this year we'll have bob hatcher back on the drums uh playing for coast to coast so uh it'll be great to have them back as well as as sambuca bob there it's uh, come full circle for uh, Bob Hatcher. Uh, I loved it when Bob was uh, working for you as uh, one of the photographers. John, one of the big challenges for all sort of race organizations, event organizations coming out of the pandemic, and you're familiar with this, Jason Verma and the team at Multisport Canada also familiar with it, is getting volunteers. It's been really difficult. Maybe the biggest challenge is getting the volunteers you need to put the races and events on. Are you still looking for volunteers for Sunday? Well, you, you know, this, Steve, having been around as long as uh, as we have, you can never have enough volunteers. Never, ever, ever. Um, so, yes, we're certainly always looking for more volunteers. Um, and I would ask anybody who might be interested in doing so, go to the Multisport Canada website. So that's multisportcanada.com. Click on the volunteer tab and, and register to be a, a volunteer at, at Barrowman. We'd really appreciate it. If you could do that, you'll be supplied with... Uh, uh, you also receive a, a meal on us, so uh, we and we'll treat you as best as we can on race day. John, looking back over this uh, nine-year journey, journey with two years off uh, during COVID, uh, I know there's a lot of people to thank uh, to get to uh, this pr Sunday in particular. Are there any people in particular you'd like to reach out to and, and give some special thanks to? Yeah, I, I would, and it, it's a bit of a repeat from the athlete guide. Those who, who get that later on today can 
can take a look at that. But first off, Ron and Linda Lemon uh, and their crew of volunteers from Welland, they've, they've been helping us uh, for over 15 years with what was originally uh, 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 Multisport Canada Welland event in, in June. And then they became very involved with, with Barrelman uh, beginning it right from the start. Um, the um, surrounding communities and stakeholders going point to point is is quite a task and without the uh, the uh, the uh, sorry cooperation of all the stakeholders and communities it doesn't happen and especially the OPP and the Niagara Regional Police um, that's something that has really uh, suffered for all events this year is the availability of paid duty officers so we pay those police officers to to come out and and keep you safe um, and that's been a challenge but the OPP and the Niagara Regional Police have uh, have helped us out this year and we'll be back. So, and then the Niagara Parks Commission, uh, Sarah Wood and Tracy Wallace of the, the, the commission are instrumental in helping the event. The mayor of Welland, uh, Frank Campion, uh, and last but not least, our ambassador team. Um, they do a great job actually all year round. It's not just at the race. They're, they're on our ground hand, uh, Niagara Falls Facebook group. They ask, answer a lot of questions and help athletes understand what's going on. Uh, so Mac, William uh, McArlen, I always get it wrong, the third. Mac is unfortunately injured and not racing this year. However, he's coming all the way up from Maine to help out and volunteer. I mean, that's tremendous. Angela Lilly, she's one of the top age group athletes in Ontario. Uh, just recently, she was fourth overall at uh, the 70.3 in Mount Tremblant on August 20th. So it's great to have her out. Uh, Luke Egotts, again, one of the top age group athletes in Ontario. I'm not sure, I think. Steve, he might be in the 50 to 54 age group now. I don't know, but he's always at the top, no matter what age group he's in. And then uh, Mike Smith, as I mentioned earlier, president of the Rochester Tri Club, a.k.a. the Rats. Um, they've been very helpful to us. And finally, Daniel Brosseau. He's also one of the top age group athletes in Ontario. Uh, and he, he's been uh, very, very good for us on as an ambassador, on especially on the website. John, I know on Sunday you'll be positioned at the the finish line, shaking uh, almost every finisher or every finisher's uh, hand when they do get across uh, the finish line. What do you hope uh, for finishers to walk away with other than that uh, genuine handshake from you when they get across the finish? Well, it's again, it's probably going to sound like a, a broken record, but um, we take pride in, in how we treat our, our athlete customers, and uh, that's important to us. So race day... Uh, when you're announcing them, and, and hopefully I'll be spelling off now and again with, with Joseph Park on the handshaking. I'm getting a bit older, so it's uh, it can be for a long day. So it might not be me, but it would be me or Joseph Park. Um, you know, I, I hope that they have a real feeling of pride in their accomplishment. Steve, you know it. We, we've been at that finish line. People in tears, you know, screaming at the top of their lungs with excitement and happiness. That that that's probably, I get goosebumps now just talking about it. It's, it's one of the most rewarding experiences we can have. And I hope that they feel that. And I hope that they feel that they were treated exceptionally well by our team and that it contributed to making it a, a really great race experience. John, I know race week's a busy time for you and the team at Multisport Canada. Thanks for taking a few minutes uh, to give us some updates on the race to come on Sunday. Well, I'll give you one last little bit tidbit as well. If you have not registered yet, if you haven't registered yet and you missed registration, don't worry about it. We've made sure that there are spaces available. So if you wanted to enter this week, all you need to do is go to email info at multisportcanada.com, request a late access entry, and you'll be uh, able to uh, join us on Sunday. That's great to hear. Thanks again, uh, John. You've been watching uh, Barrelman TV, and my guest today has been John Salt, the co-founder of the Multisport Canada Race Series and uh, founder of the Barrelman Triathlon, I'm Steve Fleck on behalf of the whole team at the Barrelman and Multisport Canada. Thank you for watching, and we will see you on the start line in Welland on Sunday morning. See you on Sunday. Download the athlete guide for a full schedule of events, parking info, and course maps at niagarafallstriathlon.com.